welcome to Arduino tutorial number six hosted by the real Tony Stark. In this tutorial we will be covering such topics as analog read, analog write, and serial monitor. For this tutorial you will require the Arduino software, the Arduino Uno or some comparable Arduino microcontroller, a breadboard, some LEDs, uh, jumper wires, le pièce de résistance, the resistors, and uh, an analog sensor, I'm using a potentiometer, linear potentiometer. Also, uh, breakfast with Kevin Bacon would be great, having bacon with breakfast. So, let's get into the content here. Uh, we're talking about analog read, analog write. Before we can get into those, let's take a look at what we did last time. And uh, if you've followed the previous tutorials, you will have already seen this code. Uh, basically, we have been trying to bathe this monkey. And in order to do that, uh, we created some Booleans, which, uh, again, watch the previous video if you want to break down of any of this stuff. Uh, what we've really accomplished here, though, is turning. And as you can see here, uh, the, the LEDs are turning on um, and off, which is representing our faucets. Turning on for two seconds and off for two seconds. It said for two minutes. Uh, but we were just trying to represent that we could control the state of the LEDs. Uh, however, this does not really quite accomplish what we want to do over here. Okay, uh, faucets are not binary. All right, and this this code is. This is basically the blink. This is turning them on, turning them off. Uh, faucets are analog. So, how do we represent that in code? Well, we'll enter the analog read and analog write. And uh, what we're going to do first of all, is block out this code using a comment uh, character here. And don't forget, we've also blocked out this closing brace for void loop. So make sure we add another one in here if you want to uh, eliminate that code. I just want to isolate what we're doing today. So I've separated this stuff. We're going to leave that there so we can bring it back if we need it. Moving on to analog read and analog write. Well, what does that mean? If you know digital, that means it's a binary state, which means it can be true or false, on or off, zero or one. Analog is a range. Now, most Arduino uh, microcontrollers have a uh, set range that you can use for analog reading and analog writing. So if I talk about analog reading, we're talking about taking something in from a sensor like my potentiometer. Okay. Um, most potentiometers have three pins on them. And what we're talking about with those is uh, there's a positive, negative, and an analog reading pin in the center, uh, essentially. And that's how we will wire it up to the uh, Arduino. So we're going to hook that up in just a moment. But when we're talking about the analog read code, uh, the range for that for most sensors is going to be from 0 all the way up to 1,023. Okay. Uh, that is the range that you can see, and we'll, we'll demonstrate that shortly. For analog writing, uh, the range is from 0 to 255. Okay, And that is always going to be the numbers that we're using going forward. So retain those numbers, remember them, lock them into your brain. They will come in, uh, be very uh, important as we go forwards. Okay, so that's talking about the ranges for these numbers, and you'll see more about that in a moment. All right, uh, looking at the potentiometer, I guess that would be one of the first things we want to hook up. So as I said, uh, the two outer pins are usually going to be hooked up to uh, positive and negative. So I'm going to plug it into my breadboard here. It doesn't really matter where as long as it's facing uh, the, the three pins are in separate rows. And then I've got my three jumper wires here. I'm using the red for positive, brown for ground, and green for my analog reading. So I'll make sure that these are aligned with the pins for the potentiometer. A potentiometer is the same type of uh, knob you'd find in uh, volume knobs um, for most electronics. Any type of rotational knob is usually a potenti potentiometer if it has a range of values. So, uh, actually, I'm just going to hook this up to positive here, negative here, and we'll hook up the center one in between them and run it over to our analog in. So we have six of those, A0 to A5, and I'm just going to go with A0 uh, because, well, it's 
the lowest number. Okay, so we now know that we have something connected to A0. The Arduino, however, does not. So let's go up to where we initialize our pins and our variables, and let's make a new variable. Const int, okay, so this is a, a number that will not change. And let's call this, um, I'm going to make this the hot faucet, okay, so uh, we're going to call this hot faucet pot, okay, pot in a sort for potentiometer, equals, uh, that is a zero. Now, this is an integer, okay, integers should not be allowed to contain letters. However, there's an exception made in the Arduino software that recognizes when you're identifying uh, a analog input pin that it will recognize this as pin A0 on the board. It has an actual numeric equivalent in, inside the Arduino, uh, which we don't need to worry about. We just have to call it what it, we know it is, which is A0, and it will recognize that as for the pin. So this is the uh, pot pin on A0. Okay. Well, that's not quite done yet. We have to go into our void setup. So it does not know that we want it to be an input. So that's one of the things we have to tell it. Uh, we'll go pin mode. And we'll say hot faucet pot. And we will tell it is an input. Okay, again, all caps for that part. And then you'll know if you got it right because it'll turn blue. Okay. Um, and then digital write. Now, do we have to digital write anything to this because it's an input? No, there are some cases where you will, and if uh, when we get to those uh, types of inputs, I will demonstrate that. For now, we just want it to be an input. That's fine. So now we've initialized. The Arduino knows that this pin has some purpose, and it now knows that it's an input. Okay. Still, we don't have anything defined for what that input is going to look like, so we need to map that out here. Uh, and so we're going to use the analog read. Now, we're going to need a new variable here, and you don't have to initialize every variable out here, especially if it's going to be changing in the code. So this is where we can initialize a variable as well. We can say, just like we did above, int. Notice I'm not using the constant in front of it, because I want this variable to change. So int, uh, we will say um, faucet, oops, faucet value, okay, or faucet val. Uh, to make it less typing for us going forwards, uh, equals, so we are assigning. Now again, take note of this equal sign because it will be different later on um, when we introduce comparison operators. Sometimes you're going to use two equal signs. Um, this is a one, which actually does not mean equals, it means assigns. So this variable is going to be assigned whatever we put on the right side. Make sure you keep that in mind. It does not mean equals. It's going to be assigned. We're assigning this to here. So what are we assigning? Analog read. Okay. Again, it turns orange when we spelt it right. And we go, what do we want it to read? Well, we want it to read this pin. So we can say hot faucet pot. Hot faucet oops, pot. And don't forget that semicolon. Okay. Uh, read pot value. Great. So now what? Well, now it's going to be reading whatever this rotation uh, position of the potentiometer is. Okay. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but it doesn't do anything with that. And more importantly, it doesn't show us what it's what the value is. There's nowhere on here that shows us what the value is. Well, thank goodness for the serial monitor. Uh, we're going to show you exactly what that does in a moment here we need to represent what this is in order on the screen here uh, for the human us to uh, interpret so we can see what the current value is because it will give us live feedback however in order to do that there's something that must go up in your void setup first all right and it's called the serial uh, dot oops, serial dot begin again notice that they both turn orange serial was bolded okay uh, the last piece of this part that's really important is uh, that you set the serial rate, so the rate of communication between the Arduino and your computer. Uh, I'm going to set it at 9600. That is the standard value uh, for most communication for Arduinos. So 
You can read up a whole bunch more on this if you want, uh, but 9600 is usually the one that I'm using for all of my projects, so that's a standard piece of code. If you want to use a serial monitor, you have to initialize it here. Okay. Uh, so we've got that. Then we have to use uh, we have to actually write stuff to the serial monitor. Okay, we'll start working now, but it's still not going to give us any information. We have to be specific. So there's some um, syntax that goes along with serial uh, communication. So we always start with serial. Okay, and instead of saying write to the screen, we're going to call it print. Now this does not mean it's going to come out of your printer. Uh, I was confused by that at first. This is just going to display it on the serial monitor on your screen. It's going to print it to the screen. So we will say print, and we, we will also use an open bracket. Okay. Now this is where it gets interesting. If I just were to write something like faucet valve, okay, um, and that, well, I'll let you take a guess what you think is going to happen. Okay. If we're reading the value of the potentiometer, and then we're printing it, and then it's going here and it's looping and reading it and printing it. What do you think is going to happen? Well, let's upload it to our Arduino and see and see. Let's let's just observe. Ooh, okay. Something it didn't like. What's the problem? It has an issue from the oh, it doesn't like the comment uh, piece I put in because there's no ending comment. Star this. All right. Now we've closed off our comment and it should be satisfied. Yes. Uploading. So, the LEDs have stopped blinking now because this part of the code is not being read by the Arduino. And we don't see anything happening. Well, we got to go to the serial monitor. Now, let's see. I click on it. Um, zero, zero. There's a whole line of zeros going on here. Uh, and nothing's happening. Well, notice A at the bottom, 9600 baud. Okay, that's the same value that we put in, 9600. That's good. No line ending. Well, fine. Uh, auto scroll. That's good. That keeps it moving. Now you can't really tell it's moving, but as soon as I start to rotate the potentiometer here, we should see nothing happen. Great. So, for some reason, this is this is great. I can now demonstrate some troubleshooting for us. Um, ah, well, there's the issue. I plugged this red into uh, the positive on the breadboard. However. I have not connected any positive from the Arduino to the board. So, let's grab another jumper. And sometimes this happens, okay? So sometimes even though you think, you know, you covered it all, uh, you may not have. No, I'm going to use 5 volts. And I'm going to run that to the breadboard. Okay. So now we should have power, uh, positive voltage going through this. Negative voltage on the other side. Green wire. We should be good. So again, we're not going to see anything happen down here, but we will hopefully see something happen in the serial monitor. So we'll click on it again. Ooh, okay. Now, I don't know about you, but that's really difficult for me to read. It is printing it. If I change it, you'll see the numbers start to... Wah! Okay. No good. Because we need to... There's a print, which prints it horizontally across. It does not recognize anything else. It does not know we want it. new spaces or any type of line, a uh, new line. So one thing you can do is print LN, which means print line. So it will print this value on a new line than the previous value. Okay? Um, so let's try it again. Now let's upload it and see what changes. Ooh, okay, now we can read these numbers. All right, 636. I see a 637 appearing there occasionally. Now, if I rotate the knob, we will see this go all the way up to 1023. And if I rotate it all the way back to the other side, we'll get all the way down to zero. So this is the range I was talking about for analog read. All right, you can get all the way up. You can get quite a range of values, and it can tell you the exact position of the knob at all times. Very, very useful. So that works. That was great. However, once you start having a number of analog reads and you want to display them, if you just do it like this, you're not going to know which number is represented by which. So the, there's a reason why I started with serial.print because this is traditionally how you would represent anything in the serial monitor to make to add clarity for you. Uh, so serial.print. Okay. 
and then we will open it up with a bracket and now we use a quotation mark now as soon as I put something in between quotation marks it no longer um, has to be any type of code we can just like comments we can put anything we want in between them and it will display that as the text in front of whatever value we want to have so in this case we want to say um, faucet value oh and colon and space okay remember to have a space otherwise this number will be right up against that and then we'll say quotation mark bracket semicolon now we, I didn't do print line here because I want this to be printed on the same line as this value. So what it's going to do is it'll print this, then it will print the value next to it, then it will go to a new line. Print this again, and we'll see that change. So let's upload it and see what happens. Lots of value, 613. So now we can see the, the merit in this because it's going to break it down. And if you have a whole bunch of variables that you want to monitor simultaneously, um, you can do that on one line. The serial monitor is big enough and it will update down this way. It's much easier to read than that first thing we had going on. So for example, if I had another variable that I wanted to do, I would go serial dot print. Now I want these ones to be on the same line, but I want there to be some space between them. So I'm going to say print. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go and say something in quotation marks. Because I want a space, I do a comma, then a space, and then we'll say the next one. And let's say uh, hot water temp, or let's say water temp would be better. Water temp, colon, space. Again, structuring this in such a way that it gives you, it makes readability, okay, is huge here. That's why I do all the spacing and commas that I do. Uh, print line for the last one. Okay, that's going to be the one that comes at the very end and cause a new line with whatever we put in here. And then we could say if we had a, a water temp variable, uh, we could put that in here. I'm just going to say faucet value again, um, just so we have something to display. Okay, let's upload. So we'll see the same number displayed twice, but what you'll see is that it can do display multiple variables at once on the same so here we go. So now you know, oh, right, this is what I use for that. This is the current value of that. Now they are the same here as I changed them. Um, but this is how you would break it down and display to yourself, oh, that's what's happening at this time. That's really important, very crucial for debugging your code and for knowing what values you want to set it to recognize some event. Okay? So that is awesome. We've got this working. I'm going to remove uh, this one because we only really need it to display once. And the last part of this uh, tutorial is going to show you uh, the output of analog values. So as I said, you have a range between 0 and 255. And what we're going to do is demonstrate that with this red LED. If this is the uh, value of the hot faucet, this uh, input, then we want the temperature or output um, amount to match that. So um, there's actually one other thing in here I'm going to teach you, which I didn't even realize I would. If I go to the Arduino website, uh, there should be something in here called Map. Aha! Now, Map is part of the Math uh, Library. And Map, what it does is, it will take a range of values and um, map them to another range of values. So, um, I'm going to demonstrate that in a moment here. This is a, an example if you want to go through and see. Uh, and notice again, they're using um, these same ranges here. And I'll explain why we're going to be doing something very similar to that in a moment. Uh, map is huge when you're using analog outputs or inputs. Um, it basically changes the range of values to match whatever else uh, you have going on in your code. For example, uh, when we use analog write instead of analog read, okay, uh, we're going to use that um, as, an, as an output here. So let's say um, analog write And then we have this bracket. Now, a normal way to do analog write would to simply say, uh, what value do we want to do? So we could say faucet value. Okay, not a problem. But remember, the value of this could go from zero all the way up to 1,023. The value of analog write can only go up to 255. So though this will work up to a certain point, you're going to waste about three quarters of the potentiometer rotation where it actually doesn't change the value at all. It's just going to max out at 255, which will mean the 
LED is on at its brightest. Uh, by the way, that's what the 0 to 255 is talking about here, the um, fading of the LED. So at 0, it's off. At 255, it's maximum brightness. And everything in between is everything in between. Uh, when we have the analog right here with this value, as soon as it exceeds 255, you're not going to see any change at all. It's just going to stay at its max brightest all the way up to 1023. So that's where the mapping com comes in. But I'm going to demonstrate this one first. Let's just see what happens if I do that. Uh, analog, right. Ah, right. I forgot an important part of this. What are we writing it to? We didn't tell it which pin. Well, what pin is our red LED? That is hot faucet LED. So that is the first part of the analog right. Uh, hot faucet LED, comma, space. Uh, and again, if I look down here, too few arguments, it tells me. Analog right needs something in the front and an integer in the second. This is where debugging comes in. I did that, of course, on purpose to demonstrate this to you. So here we go. We should have that fine now. Let's go upload. Hey, no errors. I like. And what we're going to see is the red LED is now fully on. Why is that? Well, let's open up the serial monitor. It's telling us that 497. That is a maximum brightness. So if I rotate this up, uh, oh, it's actually cycling through. So um, it's using, I guess, the from the 255, it starts itself back over at zero, uh, which, again, is not really the effect that I was going for. I want this to range from off to on in an entire rotation of the, the dial here. And instead, of, it's going from zero to on, zero to on, zero to on, and every range in between multiple times. Um, so not quite the value, not quite the effect we are going for. So let's close that. Let's try this again. Uh, this is where we use the map function. Okay. Uh, now there's two ways you can do this. You can map it directly inside of the analog right. That's not a problem. Or we can create a new variable here. Now let's say int. Um, let's call it uh, water output. Again, I'm initializing a variable in here because I know it's going to be changing every time the loop runs through. So it's not something that I want to use anywhere outside of the loop, and therefore we can initialize it in here. Int water output equals map. The first thing we want to map is we need to, what variable are we mapping to this one? Well, in this case, we're going to use faucet val. Okay. We're going to take whatever value that is, and we know that its range goes from 0 to 1, 0, 2, 3. Okay. There's five values that go in a map function. There's the va variable that we're looking at. There's its range, which comes first, and then the range we want to map it to. So what we're going to say, if it's if faucet value is 0, map it to 0. Okay. But if it's 1, 0, 2, 3, map it instead to 255. So what this is telling us is these two ranges, these are going to be the two endpoints here. However, if you have something that's halfway between uh, 1024, um, then we're looking at, so what is that, 512? Uh, if it's 512 is what you're reading at the faucet value, so the potentiometer is 512, we want that to be, that's halfway between here, that should be halfway between this, which I guess is 125, 123, 2, whatever. Uh, that's what we're looking at. We want that to map these values. So every check it's going to go through and assign it now to this variable. And instead of using faucet val, we're going to use water output as the new value for the LED. So this will be connected now. It'll assign this, it'll read in the value from the potentiometer, it will map it from this value to somewhere in this range instead so that the entire rotation of the knob should output something much better for this. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, so again, I'm looking at this red LED. Nothing's looking very interesting there. If I start to rotate it, we can see it start to come on. And I keep going, keep going. It gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And we don't have that cycling anymore. Okay, uh, that's basically what we're looking for here is that we can turn on the faucet maximum, we can turn it all the way off and off with a potentiometer. So that's basically it for analog uh, read and analog write. Again, you have a little treat of a map function in there as well. And uh, serial printing and uh, monitoring of what's going on inside your code. So again, if we watch me rotate, you'll see the value now changes. Instead of going up to uh, 
it still goes up to 1023, but the LED is only going up to 0 to 55. And if we want now, it would make sense to, instead of printing line, let's go copy this code. Let's put it down here. And uh, let's change this to water output. Oops. And don't forget to put that comma space in front. And this is now going to be water output. Okay, and if we upload this, uh, you should expect now that we're going to show both variables the value of this as it uh, increases when we rotate the potentiometer. So here we go again. Let's fade that water. Ah, something doesn't like it. Oh, we forgot. Print line. Ha <laughs> ha. Upload. So don't forget to do that if you want to make your code legible. Did that on purpose. Again. Here we go. All right. So notice again, if I go all the way to off, both are zero. As I increase here, we have something like 140 is equivalent, mapped to 34 in the output. And that's what we're talking about. This is 34 out of 255, and this one's 473 out of 1,023, which is 117 out of 255. Let's see if we can get to that 512 range. Oh, that's going to be tough. Oh, we're close. Oh, right around in there. Anyways, and there you see, so that's about half of the... Uh, yeah, that's that's good. So there you go. Uh, this is the end of this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you took something away. Next time we will be covering uh, if statements and for statements uh, so we can do a lot more cool stuff than, uh, well, this is already pretty cool. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and uh, this is the real Tony Stark signing off.